I am continuing in my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am continuing reading in a chronological order, according to event, not according to publication or volume. So I'm skipping around a bit as I move along. We are continuing in Helaman. The last thing that we read, while well, Nephi and Lehi did their great missionary efforts among the Lamanites and converted almost all the Lamanites, ushered in a great period of peace and prosperity where Lamanite and Nephite didn't matter. You could go wherever you wanted to, both in the land southward and in the land northward. We're just spreading out everywhere. But the Gadianton robbers start to infiltrate. They start insinuating themselves into the land. The Lamanites seek them out, destroy them. The Nephites build them up. And eventually they are in full control of the Nephite government. One thing to note in that is that these are still two separate nations. We are not combined into one people. This is not one nation. But you have the Lamanite government, which is still a kingdom, and the Nephite government with the reign of the judges. And the judges have been taken over. We pick this up now, Helaman chapter 7. Now, we have one of these nice headings that came as part of the translation. It says here, The prophecy of Nephi, the son of Helaman, God threatens the people of Nephi that he will visit them in his anger to their utter destruction, except they repent of their wickedness. God smiteth the people of Nephi with pestilence. They repent and turn unto him. Samuel, a Lamanite, prophesies unto the Nephites comprising chapter 7 to 16. So, that heading was part of the translation. It gives us an overview of what's to come in the rest of the book. Here we go, chapter 7. Nephi is rejected in the north and returns to Zarahemla. He prays upon his garden tower and then calls upon the people to repent or perish. Behold, now it came to pass in the sixty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of the Nephites, that Nephi, the son of Helaman, returned to the land of Zarahemla from the land northward. For he had been forth among the people who were in the land northward, and did preach the word of God unto them, and did prophesy many things unto them. And they did reject all his words, insomuch that he could not stay among them, but returned again unto the land of his nativity. And seeing the people in a state of such awful wickedness, and those Ganianton robbers filling ju the judgment seats, having usurped the power and authority of the land, laying aside the commandments of God, and not in the least a right before him, doing no justice unto the children of men, condemning the righteous because of their righteousness, letting the guilty and the wicked go unpunished because of their money, and moreover to be held in office at the head of the government, to rule and do according to their wills, that they might get gain and glory of the world, and moreover, that they might the more easily commit adultery and steal and kill and do according to their own wills. Now this great iniquity had come upon the Nephites in the space of not many years. And when Nephi saw it, his heart was swollen with sorrow within his breast, and he did exclaim in the agony of his soul, Oh, that I could have had my days in the days when my father Nephi first came out of the land of Jerusalem, that I could have joyed with him in the promised land. Then were his people easy to be entreated, firm to keep the commandments of God, and slow to be led to do iniquity. And they were quick to hearken unto the words of the Lord. Yea, if my days could have been in those days, then would my soul have had joy in the repent righteousness of my brethren. But behold, I am consigned that these are my days, and that my soul shall be filled with sorrow because of this the wickedness of my brethren. And behold, now it came to pass that it was upon a tower which was in the garden of Nephi, which was by the highway which led to the chief market, which was in the city of Zarahemla. Therefore Nephi had bowed himself upon the tower which was in his garden, which tower was also near unto the garden gate by which led the highway. And it came to pass that there were certain men passing by and saw Nephi as he was pouring out his soul unto God upon the tower. And they ran and told the people what they had seen. And the people came together in multitudes that they might know the cause of so great mourning for the wickedness of the people. And now when Nephi arose, he beheld the multitudes of people who had gathered together. And it came to pass that he opened his mouth and said unto them, Behold, why have ye gathered yourselves together, that I may tell you of your iniquities? Yea, because I have got upon my tower, that I might pour out my soul unto my God, because of the exceeding sorrow of my heart, which is because of your iniquities. 
And because of my mourning and lamentation, ye have gathered yourselves together and do marvel, yea, and ye have great need to marvel. Yea, ye ought to marvel, because ye are given away, that the devil hath got so great hold upon your hearts. Yea, how could you have given away to the enticing of him who is seeking to hurl away your souls down to everlasting misery and endless woe? O oh, repent ye, repent ye, why will ye die? Turn ye, turn ye unto the Lord your God, why has he forsaken you? It is because you have hardened your hearts. Yea, ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd. Yea, ye have provoked him to anger against you. And behold, instead of gathering you, except ye will repent, behold, he shall scatter you forth, that ye shall become meat for dogs and wild beasts. Oh, how could you have forgotten your God in the very day that he has delivered you? But behold, it is to get gain, to be praised of men, yea, and that ye might get gold and silver, and ye have set your hearts upon the riches and the vain things of this world, for the which ye do murder and plunder and steal and bear false witness against your neighbor and do all manner of iniquity. And for this cause woe shall come unto you, except ye shall repent. For if ye will not repent, behold, this great city, and also all those great cities which are round about, which are in the land of our possession, shall be taken away, that ye shall have no place in them. For behold, the Lord will not grant unto you strength as he has hitherto done, to withstand against your enemies. For behold, thus saith the Lord, I will not show unto the wicked of my strength to one more than the other, save it be unto those who repent of their sins and hearken unto my words. Now therefore I would that ye should behold, my brethren, that it shall be better for the Lamanites than for you, except ye shall repent. For behold, they are more righteous than you, for they have not sinned against that great knowledge which ye have received. Therefore the Lord will be merciful unto them, yea, he will lengthen out their days and increase their seed even when thou shalt be utterly destroyed, except thou shalt repent. Yea, woe be unto you, because of that great abomination which has come upon, among you. And ye have united yourselves unto it, yea, to that secret band which was established by Gadianton. Yea, woe shall come unto you, because of that pride which ye have suffered to enter your hearts, which has lifted you up beyond that which is good, because of your exceedingly great riches. Yea, woe be unto you, because of your wickedness and abominations. And except ye repent, ye shall perish. Yea, even your land shall be taken from you, and ye shall be destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold now, I do not say that these things shall be of myself, because it is not of myself that I know these things. But behold, I know that these things are true, because the Lord God has made them known unto me. Therefore I testify that they shall be. Nephi has been on a mission among the Nephites in the land northward. And it fails. The people reject him completely, and he says he has to leave. He cannot stay among them because they are so much against the truth. So it comes back down to Zarahemla, which is the seat of Nephite government. It is still the capital of the Nephite kingdom. And it's just full of wickedness. And he goes up on his tower and prays. A couple of people see him praying. They spread the word, and the people gather together a large multitude. And then we have this great prophecy. Everything is going to be destroyed because you're not repenting. You're not doing what you're supposed to do, and God is not going to help you when you're wicked. Don't think that you will be preserved when you are living in wickedness. There's not much else to say about this chapter, so I'm going to leave that here, and we will pick this up in chapter 8 next. So I'll see you there.